coordinate proofs can be kind of difficult and can seem kind of daunting because of all of the calculations. So this video is just to provide a little extra support and some insight on how to quickly and easily get at these coordinate proofs with quadrilaterals. So the first thing I want to think about is going back to this family tree. And there's really three branches in our family tree. We've got the parallelogram family, the kite family, and the trapezoid family. And if we think about the defining trait, what separates those three branches, it has to do with parallel lines. The parallelogram family has two pair parallel lines. The kite family has zero parallel lines. And the trapezoid family has one pair parallel. So when I'm faced with a coordinate proof, the first thing I'm going to check is slope. And the reason that I check slope first is it tells me parallel. And so I might be able to eliminate an entire branch of the family if I have two pair parallel. I'm now down to four choices. It also tells me perpendicular. And that further helps me eliminate which of those two families I'm in. Or it might help me tell if I have a right trapezoid versus an isosceles or a right kite. So slope is really powerful and it's actually a pretty simple calculation. So just for a reminder, the slope formula, we take our y coordinates and we subtract them over our x coordinates and we subtract them. So let's look at two examples really quick. So the directions always say name as specifically as possible. So it's always a good idea to graph because the visual is important. And sometimes you get lucky, as you're seeing here, and we get horizontal and vertical lines. And the slope calculations on horizontal and vertical lines is much easier. So here's my figure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate all of the slopes. Now you also want to be fairly tidy and neat about how you do your calculations so that you can actually see what you have when you get done. So the slope of LM is 0 because it's a horizontal line. The slope of MN is going to be 3 minus minus 2 over 4 minus 2 minus minus is a plus. So end up with 5 halves. The slope of n to p is 0. And the slope of l to p is minus 2 minus 3 over minus 4 minus minus 2 minus minus is plus. So end up with negative 5 over negative 2, which is 5 halves. So at this point, I want to draw a conclusion. Therefore, I have two pair parallel and no perpendicular, because I don't have any opposite reciprocals. So in my head, I now know, if we think back to the family tree, if I don't have perpendicular, I can't have a rectangular square, I have to tell the difference between a parallelogram and a rhombus, and that has to do with side lengths. So I, at this point, either have a parallelogram or a rhombus. And the only way to tell the difference between those is the distance, the length of the sides. Now, I don't have to do the distance of all of them. I know in a parallelogram that opposite sides are equal by one of our properties. What I care about is if I can prove consecutive sides are equal, I want to check consecutive sides, and that will tell me whether or not I have a parallelogram or a rhombus. If they're equal, it's a rhombus. If they're not, it's a parallelogram. So we can pick any two sides to check that are touching, that are consecutive. And so if I do the distance from P to N, also nice because it's horizontal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now if I do the distance from P up, oops, sorry about that one, P to L, I have P to L, 
distance formula, minus 2 minus minus 4, the quantity squared, plus 3 minus minus 2, the quantity squared. So minus a minus is plus, so I have 2 squared plus 5 squared, still under the square root, 4 plus 25, which is the square root of 29, definitely not the same thing as 6, therefore a parallelogram because two pair parallel and consecutive sides are not equal. So that way I've proven what I have. Let's look at another example. So here's this figure. 1, 2, 3, here's M, negative 1, 1, here's L, negative 1, here's K, and P is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Now, looking at the picture, I suspect it's some sort of a trapezoid, but I must provide proof of that. So if I go through and I do my slopes, so if I start with my slope of m to p, that's horizontal, 0. My slope from p to k is going to be negative 2 minus 3 over negative 1 minus 4, negative 5 over negative 5, so my slope is 1. My slope of l k is undefined because that is a vertical line, and my slope from l to m is going to be 1 minus 3 over minus 1 minus 1. So I end up with negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. So at this point, I can conclude, therefore, get my names here, LM is parallel to KP. And this is a trapezoid. But is it an isosceles trapezoid? I know it's not a right trapezoid because I don't have perpendicular. So it's a trapezoid of some kind. Now I have to check distance. And the only distance I care about in a trapezoid is this side and this side because those are the non-parallel. So if they're equal, I have isosceles trapezoid. If they're not, I have a regular trapezoid. If you remember over here in the trapezoids, two pair parallel puts me here. I knew I didn't have a right angle because of the slope, so I have to tell the difference between these two, that defining characteristic of those legs being parallel or being equal or not. Nice part about this problem is I have a horizontal and a vertical, so I can just count them. M to P is one, two, three. So my distance of M to P is equal to three. My distance from L to K is 1, one 2, 3. Therefore, I can say that M, L, K, P is an isosceles trap because one pair parallel and the non-parallel are equal. And it's this conclusion that matters because that explains what all of your work is showing. So I hope you found this video helpful and check out the other extra support materials if you feel like you want more practice. Good luck!